Do you like nerdy stuff? Of course you do. Want to see someone make that stuff? But smaller? Sculpting minis, tabletop terrain, props, puppets, and tutorials, a crafting channel for all things nerdy. Join me over on YouTube at Niche Crafts where I make stuff about stuff. Hey everyone, it's me, Nick, from the Tabletop Podcast. When I'm not hosting, I'm thinking about ways to create a better podcast for you guys, and I think I landed on something pretty fun. In fact, if you go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash tabletopped and join for as little as a dollar a month, you can get access to a new episode a month that we're going to start putting out. In fact, we're going to be calling this one Wild Magic, I think, in that we're going to talk about anything and everything that interests us. That's not just TTRPGs, though there will be a lot of that. It is truly unhinged, and if you are a fan of the podcast and all of the hosts, you're definitely going to want to be on it. Uh, We're thinking of dropping these at the end of each month, so join our Patreon today. That is patreon.com slash tabletopped. Oh, and there's going to be so much more coming out in the new year there, so don't miss it. Sign up today. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Tabletop. It's Nick, your host. Here with me today are two of the the greatest and best. Why don't we start with you over there? Who are you? It's me, Franco, and my background is immigrant. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Rio, what about you? Uh, Hey, it's Rio. My background is queer minority. (laughs) Uh, And again, uh, Nick again, my background is uh, charlatan. Okay, let's keep going. Charlatan! (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, so today we want to talk about backgrounds. We want to talk about how they affect uh, player classes and in classless systems, how they work. And also just in general, like how we like to use them as GMs and as players. So Mm -hmm. do either of you want to start us off? Like how do you like to think about backgrounds? I usually ignore them. Completely? Yeah, there's there's so many of them, and they do so many different things. And I'm always just like, I want to tell my own story. Mm. So I kind of feel like a background would would kind of rein me in. So are you saying as a, a GM or as a player making As your, a player. Yeah, so when you're making a character, you're like, I don't want to think about it. And you're thinking about stuff. 5e. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah, pick one. Okay. I haven't really played with backgrounds in other rule settings to really know how they work. Yeah. In um, yeah, I I think I think I kind of latched onto them when I started playing them. So like my first character Sigra was a folk hero paladin, and so I was like, oh yeah, folk hero that means something. And so like I when I put his like backstory thing together or whatever, right? Like it was like, oh he's a folk hero because he did this or whatever, and it's kind of like it's very big. Yeah. And then whenever I make um. Uh, another character I'm always like at a loss mm-hmm. from 5e's background list to like how to how to fit the character that I'm thinking of and, and put it into that mold yeah exactly uh, some I, of them are hyper specific too yeah like Strixhaven like stuff and... yeah some of those and then I feel like the ones that are sort of the default ones in the SRD are really um there's not really that many of them. Yeah. And I think you can kind of make your own. And I think you they should... do. They have a new thing where you can like make a custom one. I think people should probably do that yeah. more often in 5e just because the class gives you so much stuff. And I mean, I'm, I don't know. I'm not a fan of it. But anyway, I think my the, the one that I used to the greatest effect was um, in a game where I was a rogue assassin but I was a noble, mm. um, and the noble background, um, it gets you something like really concrete, but then you can also, as an alternative rule, um, get three lackeys. Mm, that's fun. <laughs> and so I picked that, and I kind of I kind of flavored it as like, okay, I'm like a, like I'm, I'm a noble, but I'm like, not defamed, but um, what's the word, like, Sort of like my my I'm not in good with the family, mm-hmm. but I do have these like three like 
people who are kind of like this is like these are your retinue. <laughs> yeah, this is like my retinue, and they're all like they've all got their own like character. They're yeah. they've all like you know they don't really put themselves in harm or anything like that. And I I like them all, and yeah. I've grown up with them or, or whatever it is you know. Where I'm getting Final Fantasy 15 vibes. You guys play with that uh, boy band? No, no, never played it. Oh man, I've never played a Final Basically, Fantasy. Basically, the main character is either. a prince, and you're leaving with your your retinue, like your your mm -hmm. guardsmen. But there's three guys you've grown up with, so you're like this band of like four just dude bros, <laughs> and a and a nice car going on a road trip to get just one four guy chads <laughs> traveling across with the country. Magical weapons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think they're like I think the ones that I had were kind of flavored as like. Um, and were they like hirelings a, or did no. they count? As, they were just like flavor in the kind of yeah. yeah. And and they would be like they would do things for me. Yeah. Like I could be like, oh, we want to do this thing. It's like yeah, I'll send I'll send Falchion, and we were all like named after weapons. Yeah, it was Falchion, um Club, <laughs> maybe Claymore, Claymore, Stiletto. Oh, we were called the Stilettos. Yeah, yeah. So it was like it was both like a gang that I had, and also I was a noble, and so so like basically you know. It, Try to make it work within the, the bounds that the yeah. 5e has given you for these backgrounds, but yeah. yeah, I I think that I'm in between both of you because the the thing that I yeah. find you, you are I, technically yeah physically yes, <laughs> um, I think that for 5e I I've always use them to like set parameters for myself when I'm building a character. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, what would it mean if this person's a warlock but is has a noble background, or is if this person is a fighter but has a charlatan background like what does that mean and then i can yeah. write from there um i think that i to what you were saying about the stilettos like my favorite thing that a couple of groups have done within candle cove is when they take uh, classes and background stuff where they can drop NPCs into the world and say like, hey, I have this move where I, I'm like well connected. So it says I know five people in the area. And it's like, okay, let's make those together. Because that I think is like my favorite use of backgrounds is like how can I use it to tie this character into the, to into the, the game world more. Yeah. 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 Um, I find them much, much harder to use slash have when they give sort of some sort of like concrete thing, but it feels like a less easy to grasp. I'll use the folk hero thing. Mm -hmm. There's a line in there that's like, people, commoners will offer you hospitality yeah. when, when asked and stuff like that. But like, that's like, as a GM, you have to really like have all of these things out. And then you have to also, like, you can't over design towards them because to Rio's point, like, some people just don't like their backgrounds and don't really think about them after they pick them. Some people don't know what their backgrounds give them. As a GM, you might not know what the background gives you well, super well. Like, for the folk hero, it's like, you're a folk hero and people blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, no, no. But like, what did you do? And like, why are you a folk hero? And so like, you have to build that out. But people don't often do that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it, it's like the background should have something that feels a little bit more concrete. Yeah. I also think it's kind of tough, too, because if you're in Rio, we've talked about this like several times, both on and off mic, where it, it's like as a level one character, you have not already slayed a dragon and been like right. a huge thing. So if you're a folk hero and you're a level one, what does that mean? Yeah. You know, what have you done? Yeah. Is it you like fought a bear? Yeah. It's like you wrestled you, a bear at a fair. You saved the kitten like, from a tree, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, and so then it becomes sort of like a weird negotiation with um, the GM in the world. And, like, that's fine. Like, I, I usually write my characters and what they want and into the core world. Throw but this in there, too. Like, powers maybe dwindle. Like, character levels aren't permanent. You mm -hmm. can always think about it like that way. Maybe your folk hero was because you were a level four adventurer and now you've retired and it's been some time since your last adventure. I think the folk here is just a problem. Yeah. <laughs> we've talked about this a few times. I still really want to do a campaign that was like a bunch of adventurers that were like heroes and then retired for like 20 years. And then something has happened where they all have to come out of retirement and do the thing again. They start them back at level one and they're yeah. like relearning the, the ropes because they're old now. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I love it. Um, so, okay. Backgrounds in general. That's how they work in D&D. In &D and... I don't know. I have like as from a GM's perspective, not a player perspective. Have you ever used them to like rope your characters in? Like what from a from a design standpoint or a, a running a game standpoint? Have you ever been like, oh, thank God for backgrounds? <laughs> like what uh, what what do you think? 
about them from that perspective? I've never, again, I've never really thought about backgrounds in that way. Like if I'm writing a story, I'm like, what backgrounds could people have? I'm like, no, I don't. It's like, well, who are the people? What well, do they when, want? When they come to you with a background. Like if when I came to you with Sigra and he had the folk hero background. Oh, yeah. Then I, like if you wanted to use a background, yeah, I could do some stuff. But I, I've never made anything like, oh, thank God someone has this background. It's going to tie the whole thing together. Like, I've never done that. <laughs> One of the biggest like kind of little jokes that I had with Rio for our first campaign, because Rio was my first GM, um, Bill had a charlatan background. Yeah. And one of the things that it gives you is undercommon. Do you remember <laughs> that? And I, I literally, every single, for the first year we were playing, I'm like, hey, I know undercommon. Like, do I, like, what, can I, like, speak undercommon, see what people are saying? Or, like, do I see any signs of undercommon around? And Rio was like, nope. <laughs> Just nope. Like, let's move on. <laughs> That's why uh, I've introduced language points into my system. Uh, yes, yes, Basically, yes. you just, uh, when when the language comes up, then you can know it. Yeah. And then you can spend your language point. And you've always <laughs> known that language. <laughs> I think that that's a great, uh, that is actually a really elegant solution to the problem. I think I, I felt in a lot of uh, TTRPG games where it's like, something's come up, there's like a mystical tablet with a language no one knows. And it's like, okay, well, I know Abyssal, Deep Speech, and Dwarven. Is it any of those? And it's like, no. And then someone else and is like, also, okay, I know. And also, they will never come up. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, and uh, okay, I, I know Draconic. I know, you know, this and the Elvish and whatever. And then it's There's like, too no. many languages in d and I'll tell you that much, too. Yeah. Loxodon. <laughs> I mean, there's too many languages, and they're all fucking stupid, because it's like, oh, yeah, all... All elves know Elvish. Like, what are you talking about? That's not how yeah. language works. And I also, know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And like, also the the thing about backgrounds too is that usually the rewards for picking a background is like a skill and several language spots. Mm -hmm. So it really is this way of like, oh, remember languages? You're learning X numbers, and remember, certain people only speak this, and you'll never be able to talk to them otherwise. <laughs> it's like, what? There <laughs> how does was this a, work? Two of my characters. I don't know what backgrounds they took, and. Um, I don't really care, but for whatever reason, they needed to know Celestial, and I was like, how the fuck does that make any sense? Like, from their backgrounds, they, like, got Celestial somehow, and I was like, okay, um, you guys are both in a class where you're taking Celestial, <laughs> and, it's, and it's your one, and the class is over, it's been a year, and yeah. you guys, that's how you guys know each other, and you're hanging out, and it only recently has Celestial come up, and I'm like, hey, I got this for you, it's Celestial, it's written in <laughs> Celestial. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The class, you just go up and you like have a little altar and you pray and then an angel comes down and teaches everyone celestial for an hour. <laughs> no, it was a uh, Muzmazax. Muzmazax? It's a Muzzy joke. Uh, no, Muzzy, the, the Muzzy language. the language guy. Yeah, the language. Who's he? <laughs> it's, a, it's like this cartoon um, that taught languages oh. or whatever. First time I was like, like the 90s. Muzmazax. Um, one thing I have to ask both of you, though, is in systems other than 5e, have you ever used a, a background-esque type feature and really enjoyed it? Because, like, we've all played Morkborg, and that was a really— Morkborg. And that's a, a great way for you to get into these characters that are auto-generated and stuff, is that they give you sort of these background, like, kind of pieces of flair. I do you know? like the background in Morkborg. Pieces of flair. Yeah. Because that is a game where you're not crafting a character. You're pretty much just getting one. And you're not going to stay attached to it. Well, you can craft it. them, too. You can craft them if it's you totally want. It's totally okay. But it's like in my much game, more fun to roll for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in my game, I also have a random generator for it. And I think a lot of o like OSR and NSR games do this, too. But I, I think it is you can still build your own character. It's totally fine, yeah. guys. You can do it. Yeah. and But it's just fun to have it random sometimes. Yeah, for yeah. me, it challenges like, you creatively. And with the yeah, like here's your background. Make a character based off of this. I was like, yeah. Yes, I love that. Yes. Yeah, and and this also comes to with like different characteristics of your character that are either chosen or auto generated, and this is everything from like weight to age to like uh, you know if, ability, I guess. So like, if you're 75. And you know, blue eyes and red White hair. Dragon. <laughs> yeah, you're uh, Kaiba. <laughs> um, can you imagine playing a character based out of, but based off of Kaiba? I've never <laughs> so um, fun. I've Summoner never, mage. <laughs> I've never played it, but I don't know why the blue eyes white dragon joke just gets me every time. Yeah, so blue good. eyes white dragon can't lose. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, I remember I did that once to Shade when you guys were talking about Magic, mm -hmm. and then I said it, and he was like, okay, that's funny, because it's a different card game. And I was like, I have no idea what card game that is. I <laughs> just Yu-Gi-Oh, man! I, yeah, now I know it's Yu-Gi-Oh, but I was just like, I don't know. Is that yeah. Magic? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the... Um... I don't know. I just feel like when you are given specific stuff, it kind of creates a walled garden to be super mm -hmm. creative within. Like mm -hmm. constraints make the best art, kind of. And so if you're like, Should oh, be. I'm a I'm a character that's like uh, is a veteran and is 76 years old and nice. like walks with a, a mobility device or something, and then you're like, okay, I know a lot about this character just from some of these backgrounds, mm -hmm. like things, you know, flavor. Yeah. What do you think, Rio? I think. You are correct, mm. but I we going around in a circle because it's just like the same thing. It's like yeah, the background gives you some stuff to play with, and it's fun to have that information, and I like that for a quick game, not for a long game. Mm. What would you want in a long game? Though? Yeah, do you want? I don't want to. I don't want to deal with a background. I just want to make my own stories and be left. But isn't devices. that a background? But it's not a one that you choose. It's not the game giving. But you you're stuff. making one. I would yeah if it's if it's me yeah. making something yes I will make a background mm. but if I'm making a long term character I don't want the game to be like oh you were a scholar you grew up like, oh, tell me where I grew up I'll tell you where I grew up <laughs> thank you very much okay what about you right. Franco um, I like being surprised um, and I you know I I think when I made like Carmen for example in the in the Monster of the Week game which is not five E but like her her background was something that I just came up with. And I think the game does a good job of asking you questions as well. Like, you know, it'll, you'll go around the table and be like, okay, how do you, how did this person see you at this moment or whatever when, when you did this thing Yeah, that was specific to your, to your background or archetype. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they call it archetypes. Um, I think what's missing from 5e's backgrounds is like more specificity, mm -hmm. like more questions about, and I think they, it does have some questions, but I think the answers aren't very yeah. interesting. And all of the questions and traits and stuff that you get are um, agnostic to your background. Yeah. Too. Like a lot of it's like, what are your bonds and flaws or whatever. You know what else I hate? <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> hate Those us. games that make you go around the table and be like, this character saw you do X. I love that I stuff. I was like, don't write my, I don't You're know. You're just mad player. because of the thing because you were indebted to Sean or whatever. <laughs> it has nothing to do with how you actually feel about that. I don't like that, or I don't like other players getting to say that my character did this or knew that. Or... Okay, well, what if it was a different situation where? Well, no, it's. I feel I like you love that stuff when we sit down at a table and you're like, oh, oh, what, uh, Stephen? What about if like I saw you do this and that, and that's why you owe me? And then he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But then like you were also there, and so I have that. He doesn't on want you to collaborate. He just wants to write I, his own story. No, I, I'm saying that real. No, I do. I do. Like, I want I to collaborate with people. This is. But what I I'm, don't want it to be a game mechanic. Mm, interesting. I just want to be able to collaborate with people and not be like, oh, I'm gonna have this string on you and I can pull it. Like, so what, that, so there's parts of well, but like they don't have to pull the string on you. It can just be yeah. a background. But then flavor. they have it. But they have it. Did well, you find that like uh, uh, hindering you in the Monster of the Week game we played? Because they do that in that game as well. Because like the one that I'm thinking of, probably that you're like, I really didn't like that was Westwood when there were the the strings that were like, like a mechanical Westwood. part. I didn't like Tin Candles. Wow. Oh, you didn't? I thought that we had a really good ten candles. Are you talking yeah, about the no, first one? The, yeah, the game yeah. of ten candles is fine. Yeah. But Sean, uh, or was it someone else? I don't know. But like, oh, I saw you slap your daughter. I was like, I don't want to have slap my, but they were like, that's what I saw you do. And I was like, well, then I have to incorporate that into what I'm doing. To and be fair like to the audience, just for background on that game, just so yeah. you know where, where Rio is coming from, is that there is a, a mechanic where you have to tell – uh, like write down what the person on your left or right the like worst thing you saw them to or something basically yeah. like their basest moment and like you saw that what is that and yours was you had slapped your daughter across the face kind of thing yeah um, which is like a like I, I can understand where that comes from the th I think that what I like about those systems and feel free to push back because I think this is very oh, specific to me um, is that I like it because it it grounds the character so that you can't 
be as Shade says, like the big damn hero. I'm not saying that mm. you were trying to do that, but I'm just saying like it's kind of nice where somebody is able to be like, oh, actually, I did hear this thing about you though, where there's like a group in, you know, X part of the world that's like really scared of you because last time you came through, you like over collected taxes and people starved or whatever. Then it's like, wow, that's like a bit of my past that I didn't know, but like totally influences this well, I guess character. It's fine now. if it's collaborative. But, but it's like not it fine just when it's when someone can just put it on you. And that I will say about that game too, because it literally is it's written down and passed, and like there is no collaboration there. It yeah. is just like I have endowed you with this. <laughs> I think because it's such a short game that that probably feels fine. Yeah. I think maybe I might have a problem with that if I wasn't able to to talk it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and to reason with yourself, to like yeah, with the to be like, okay, how do I drive this with what yeah, I had in my right, mind? Right, right, right. Um, I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, what it, it's okay not to like it. What were you about to say though? I cut you off. I'm Who so the sorry. Fuck even knows. <laughs> All right, then after this, we'll be right, <laughs> we're, we're gonna come right back and we'll talk a little bit about how we would put backgrounds into our games. When four strangers meet for the first time they unknowingly begin to unravel tightly kept secrets about their worlds. This place sucks. This realm sucks. I don't mean to interrupt, but maybe speak about portals a little quieter. You know how some people aren't really into science and magic mixing together? That's just a story. Portals haven't existed for hundreds of years. Armed with little true knowledge, but unfathomable curiosity. These four strangers set out in search of answers and form an unlikely bond. I do see you, and I'd like to think that I'll be there when you're ready to talk about it. He kind of relaxes for the first time around the group. You keep putting yourself in danger for others, but who puts themselves in danger for you? Join Ivy, Varys, Alara, and Ziva as they dive headfirst into the unknown. Follow us at Rainbow Dice Club on your favorite streaming platform. And find us at Rainbow Dice Club wherever you get your podcasts. Do you trust me? Welcome back, everyone, to Tabletop. Tabletop. Today, we are talking about... Tables. Tables and topping them. (laughs) Yeah. Oh. Um, I love to top a table. (laughs) But do I tabletop? Um, We have to make a tongue twister and then say it 10 times on the podcast. That's our our text then. (laughs) Create your tabletop tongue twister and send it in to Uh. tabletopspod.com mailbox. Exactly. On the website. (laughs) Um, My background is Riddler. Oh my god! What an amazing custom class! Like you always have a riddle, and if the oh if god. you get like That's advantage awful. on an enemy, if they can't do a riddle, <laughs> but you have to do a riddle every time. You um, have a D one hundred table of riddles. Yeah, <laughs> yes, please scratch them off every time you used one. Yeah, hmm. um, Franco. Yeah, how would you use as a GM? How would you want to use uh, backgrounds? Backgrounds in your game. Well, step into my game that I. <laughs> Whoa, are we in Franco's game? We just got Jumanji'd. Yeah, this is um, heavily based on Karen 2E. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> We're in a really deadly game. Sorry. it's uh, No, it's okay. It's <laughs> CC by uh, <laughs> this is a Creative Commons license, so it's okay for us to be here. <laughs> as long as we share alike. Um, <laughs> so in Karen 2E, there's, um, there's a really cool new feature called Backgrounds, um, and it basically... It's a little bit so like I was looking at the five E backgrounds. Um, I was looking at the Charlatan, for example, and I was just like, "Wow, this is nothing. This is like kind of boring. Like you don't really get anything from this." Um, but some of the backgrounds in Karen Tui are are very interesting. Like um, I think there's one. I'll just go with the R effects because that's one that I lifted for my game. Um, but it's um, it's basically like an alchemist class, mm-hmm. and so the first. So it gives you like a like a loadout that all of these RFXs get. Like yeah. all of you get like this, this, and this. Um, and then, do you mean like weapons or equipment? Just or? equipment. Yeah, yeah anything. Cool. It can also include a weapon. Um, I can just pull it up, but I don't know if anyone just yeah, wants to fine. hear me yeah, reach it. Let's just do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it poses you. Each of the backgrounds pose you two questions, mm-hmm. and one of them like kind of asks like who you were, how you became this thing, and then like what what thing makes you you, mm-hmm. like what makes you who you are. 
Um, I can't so, answer those questions in real life. Well, it gives you mm. six options for each of them. Oh, good. I like my <laughs> Yeah, you can choose them or this roll for them. This ain't the SATs. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're really specific things. So, like, in one of them, you can come away with a with a prototype blunderbuss. That's cool. And then with and then the second question, you can come away with, like, um, uh, fuck, I forget. Maybe I should pull it up. It well, well, here's the thing that I have yeah. about this is that because there are – I've played certain games like this as well where the background is much more sort of like um, uh, altering of your capabilities and in mm -hmm. a game where your inventory is like your main thing kind yeah. of thing. Uh, it sounds like this does that as well. Do you ever feel like feels bad based on your roles and everything? Or does everything feel just as good as the other things? You know Ideally, what I mean? everything should feel good. Yeah. <laughs> I it's think just that's like when the... you say like, oh, you could come away with a prototype blunderbuss or... Uh, a, a bag of empty potion vials. It's like, oh. no, it, no, <laughs> you know it's, what I mean? It's, it's usually like a special thing. Like it'll be like yeah. two special items or like a special ability or mm. power of some kind yeah. or, nice. or whatever. Um, and then I think that makes it more interesting than like, so we were looking at the charlatan background and there's only one unique question here. I think there are other questions here, but like they're all like the personality yeah. thing and they're all like pretty it, generic. You were out of the room, Rio, for this, but like um, the charlatan's main question is about the What's, preferred scheme. It just scam, says right? favorite scheme. It doesn't yeah. like really pose it as a question, which is fine. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Preferred like scheme. The Kentucky two cross. Yeah. So like one of them would be like, I cheat at games of chance. I shave coins or forge documents. I insinuate myself into people's lives to prey on their weakness and secure <laughs> their fortunes. It's very vague. Yeah. And I think that sort of like points to sort of like 5e's kind of, um, you know, jack of all trades, master of none type of yeah. type of vibe where they try to just be everything. Because we um, were talking off mic, Rio, about like, wouldn't it be cool if it's like I pick shell game? Like I yeah. I, I do sh uh, cheating at a shell game and that means that I get a, a shell that can turn things invisible for an hour. Ooh, that kind fun. of thing. Yeah. yeah. So something like that. Or like I insinuate myself in the people's lives to pray on the – like it could be something where you're like – you're like you insinuated yourself into the duke of something's life. Yeah. And um and but and you he you owes got, you a favor or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or or like um you know he caught you and now you like like you owe him a favor. You, yeah, you owe him a favor or something like that and then it's one like, of you's blackmailing the other, <laughs> you never really know who. Well, well yeah, but anyway like and then the item that you get from that is like a mask of disguise or like his signet ring or yeah. something like that, oh, which is nice. one of the items that you can get from the charlatan background, but it is just a bunch of junk. It's just like tools of the con of your choice parentheses, 10 stoppered bottles filled with colored liquid. Set of weighted dice, deck of marked cards, or a signet ring of an imaginary dupe. Well, and we were talking about this, Rio, how like all of this junk, it feels like junk. It feels like you opened a junk yeah. drawer and it's like banging around in there. But like that signet ring, if it's one of your 10 slots and yeah. you have like a fake Duke signet ring, like that, you're, you're using that all the time. Yeah. You're like you're trying to get into things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're like, yeah, that's sneaking that your way in, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I agree that giving it more like a specific like use is interesting. Mm -hmm. And I also think, yeah, I think you nailed it where it's like the vaguer they are, the less interesting they become. Because yeah. it's like, yeah. why am I choosing this at all? Like I yeah. don't get any bonuses out of it. And to your point, Rio, it just feels limiting over what I can say about my character. Mm -hmm. So how do we change it up? I, one of the things you said was hyper specific, like making them yeah. feel like whatever you get out of it is important. Yeah. Right. One of them, the half witch, um, you get you can get paper legs, and so it makes it easier for you to <laughs> can't to get you, wet. <laughs> but you can't. That's exactly what it says in the thing. It says, but don't get them wet. <laughs> yeah, I love that. It's like Muppet arms or whatever. Yeah. Like you can oh you God. can you can fall really easily or whatever. Like long falls don't don't yeah. scare you or something like that. But yeah, don't get them wet. <laughs> Um, I've, I've yeah. also felt this way about um, physical statistics that mm -hmm. are in the back of uh, any D and D character sheet, where it's like, how tall are you? How much do yeah. you weigh, or whatever? Because like, if you weigh two hundred and eighty pounds, plus you put a full set of like plate mail on you, oh yeah, like you're like four hundred pounds or something. Nice. And does that mean like walking across like a rickety wooden bridge is going to be feasible? a problem? Yeah, yes. like that kind of thing. Yeah. But we never really think about that stuff in nope. in D and D very often. 
often because no. we don't ever really go into that. So like, you can though. You can, but like, what is a way to inspire? And everybody in your gets game? mad because you're kind of like, oh, but I have a high deck, so I should be able to diverse it, even though my character is yeah. a warforged. And like, oh, but the halfling got the cross, and it's like without making a roll yeah. and stuff like that. You know, where you're just like, I don't know. It's it's. And again, it, it, it feels like your character sheet should be the thing that defines you, and you're not like in Five E. Often, people aren't thinking about the fiction of the situation; yeah. they are thinking about like the what, what buttons and levers am I pushing to be able to get through this obstacle? Right. And yeah. why is there even an obstacle in my way? My character should just be able to get around it. Yeah, it, going to this example specifically, I think is perfect to kind of show this. If you have a rickety wooden bridge, sure, the halfling runs across it. You have your, you know, guy in plate mail trying to walk across, and you're like, "Oh, roll! Oh, the bridge breaks! You fall <laughs> through!" Like, <You're> fucking dead. <laughs> yeah, it just for me, it just feels like there's a lot of dissonance that characters and people have when it sometimes, comes to that. Sometimes, well, you can just be like, "Hey, you just die." Sometimes. Well, I mean, I mean, you don't. You have to. You have to highlight that bridge and be like, "Hey, that you're looking at that bridge, and you're like." You don't think that can support you. You're yeah. gonna have to figure some other way around this. Yeah, or you can take the plate off or something. You know? Yeah, you can take the plate off, or you can like have it takes half... ten minutes, as Sean found out. Well, not, <laughs> not necessarily. Um, but you have ten minutes. Let's yeah. say you have ten minutes. Um, I mean, if you don't have ten minutes, then yeah, like you have to make the save. Other otherwise, the you know the the T Rex is coming behind you, and, and then like oh the bridge Which is falling. do make good dragons. Okay. <laughs> see, but <laughs> see last month's episode. Um, <laughs> but like if you're Okay, so so the bridge collapses, but you hold on to a piece of the bridge, and so you're swinging down. Yeah, oh. you're swinging down, and you're like, okay, but you have your plate mail armor, your plate arm yeah. on, and so when you hit the the cliffside on the way back, you don't take as much damage because yeah. you're armored. Yeah, something See, like that. <laughs> that. Very cool. I like that. Um, I also really like the idea that it's um, again put clocks on everything. There's like a yeah. horde of goblins that are chasing you, and you mm -hmm. get to this bridge, and it's like you're too heavy. Like take off your plate. It's like, do I have ten minutes before these goblins come and like just roll over all of us? Because there's like a hundred of them. Hey man, sometimes yeah. you do have ten minutes, and yeah. even with okay a, with a buddy, it doesn't take ten minutes. With a buddy, it's much faster. Yeah, I think yeah. it's. And I mean, yes. Let's say like they're ten minutes behind you. We can get this plate mail off and get across. But then you're not in plate mail anymore. Well, yeah. You, well, I think I think what you do is you spread the weight across the different characters that are with you, like yeah. your party members or whatever. Is like here, take my greaves, take my breastplate, yeah. etc. And it can become like a fun little puzzle thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, we solved, we yeah. solved your bridge puzzle. <laughs> so let's get back to to backgrounds a little bit. Is there in a in a perfect? My background is I'm an expert bridge crosser. Yeah, it comes up one time with the rickety bridges. <laughs> I kind of like the idea that you're like a trapeze artist or whatever. And so <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I have a, I, I made the the kindreds for my thing be kind of like half backgrounds in my mm, game. Yeah. Um, so like different ancestries and stuff. One of them is Breggles. It's from Breggles. Dolman, Dolmanwood. <laughs> um, but they're like, kind of like a goat people. Breggle so, me this. Breggle me this. <laughs> and one of their powers I gave them was um, uh, you can cross you can climb and like cross like difficult terrain easily yeah. like a goat can right um so yeah are you a goat like are you a goat no person? you're a goat person you're a goat headed oh, goat person. person oh i love that yeah that's what i want <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. um so another thing that i want to talk about is as gms what is the best case scenario and what is the worst case scenario regarding backgrounds like what do you want to get out of backgrounds being in a game from your players? Like what is the best case scenario and what is the worst case scenario? And then we can kind of talk about how to get the best case and avoid the worst case. I will say the worst case is I was playing in a random game one time. It was like a uh, big group. We're going to have a D&D &D night. Sign up if you want to run. People will sign up to be in your game. And one guy uh, was, oh, I'm uh, my profession background is cartographer. And he pulled it up. Oh, can I not get lost because I'm a cartographer? Can I find my way through this? I'm a cartographer. I think worst case scenario is people using their backgrounds to try to explain why they can't be challenged or why they have an advantage every single situation. Mm. Your background is not come I'm, I'm, a, I'm a rural southern boy. I very rarely battle rattlesnakes in my day-to-day -day life, but it's yeah. in my background. Yeah. You know, it's like it doesn't matter. Yeah. You think you could still take on a rattlesnake? Yeah, I could still take on a rattlesnake. Okay. I could not. Could I hike scared. like three miles in the woods and spend all day looking for them? No. But if I came across one, you've I, done that. I'm as good once as I ever can. 
I don't know what that means, but let's keep going. <laughs> I don't think it means anything. I think it's just a you're sentence. Good, you're good once than you I'm ever as good, can. I'm as good once as I ever was. So, Wait, you uh, know. that's still grammatically I can do it once. Is, you could do it once. As good as I ever could do it. Great. But I could used to do it a lot. <laughs> okay, great. That sounds good. <laughs> so it sounds like the worst case scenario for you with backgrounds is that people fixate on them. Yeah. I got it. What I think the you? best case scenario is that people use them at all, but try to incorporate them in ways that feel more natural. I think mm -hmm. it's just like a naturalistic thing because it, it's like sort of two sides of the same coin yeah. that we're talking about mm -hmm. is like people trying to abuse them to get around things. But I think you should be able to use your background to get around things. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, if you like if you're a charlatan and you do the shell game thing or whatever, you should be able to like pick up on cues of other people deceiving people. Yeah. Or like recognize think, someone doing the same. Yeah, yeah, recognize somebody doing the same type game of trick game. or game, <laughs> or whatever. Like any any type of thing like that that is like sort of in that same vibe. And I feel like if you pose it as a question, it becomes less challenging. Mm -hmm. And I think if you if you present it as a demand, and you're like, I must not be able allowed to be lost because yeah. I am a cartographer. Yeah. Um, which think, is not how that works, really. I think no. it, I could argue that like a cartographer might have like a good sense of direction in general, but only where you've been, like where you've come from, is you've made right. that part of the map, right? Well, yeah, but I guess it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a good sense of direction. It just means that you know how to draw a map. Yeah, yeah. it means that you're really good at distances, I guess, because you are yeah. able to like put the distances in relationship to and each other. You can other. probably draw a rough map of where you've. Been, been just now on this adventure that yeah. you're on. You'd be like, we were walking east. Yeah, I can let, let me show you where we were or whatever. Yeah. Like, kind of go that way. And if you get your bearings, you're able to keep track of those bearings maybe yeah. for a while. Like, yeah. I could see that. Like, yeah. that seems fair. Like, maybe uh, I could see, like, oh, we're lost. Yeah. Where were we? <laughs> and, like, how, how did yeah. we do this? I'm going to draw a quick map to see maybe, like, to estimate where we are. And maybe that gives you a, something. But yeah. yeah. Here's the thing for me, what I'm hearing, and I think I agree, is that it's best used when it is used to interface with the world, it is worst used when it is used to try to subjugate the world. So, oh. like, seeing somebody else do a shell game and be like, oh, like, I know what he's doing. Like, this is a person maybe we can talk to to, like, get in with the Thieves Guild or whatever. Like, I, I recognize what this is. Yeah. Like, that's using this to be more a part of the world than you were before. And you're able to communicate with them because you also do Yeah, shell right. Games. Because and I can... guess if you just, if anybody saw somebody doing a shell game, you'd be like, that's a scammer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right, right. Um, <laughs> and maybe you have cred, like, you bring out your shell and you're like, hey, yeah. I'm in the game too. And they're like, oh, cool, like, let's talk, <laughs> let's Talk. Um, but, no, they'd be like, get out of my territory. <laughs> but the you pull out a shell in front of a guy running a shell game, you're in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, but that that's still interfacing with the world of like, oh yeah, I forgot that there's like territories of shell game guys. Um, but also, I think subjugating the world via backgrounds is much more like what you're talking about of yeah. like, hey, I am a expert rattlesnake finder, so you attacking me uh, as a snake type monster actually is not effective. It's like. What did you just say? <laughs> like, what are you? What are you you're trying to tell me? What I can do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think if everything's a conversation and you post things as questions and you all trust each other, I think that's the best way you can get through any game. To be honest, yeah, I think there's a problem with the lack of trust in some tables. Yeah, I also think that um, a background should also be used to like fill out your character when it comes to RP. Like, mm -hmm. if you're yeah. if you're a wizard, but you want like an ex-boxer to be like, oh, he found this tome of magic and really got into it and now is like a beginner. Oh my God, yeah, nobody would ever do that. Nobody yeah. would ever be like, I'm a I'm a wizard and I have the gladiator background. Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, nobody ever fucking does that. Like you could do something fun with that to like, to, <laughs> to like diversify your character or make it more unique. I think that yeah. that's really cool. I think that... Um, it but you also, do not get rewarded for fun decisions. Exactly. You get no, you don't. Hamstrings. God, and I want, this is the big thing for me is like, I just want backgrounds to be fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't want them to be either useless, which is kind of where I feel like they are now. They're just like not really part of- In 5e. In 5e. Mm -hmm. They're not really part of the game in a, a real way. I also kind of like, the thing I like about like what you were talking about, Cairn and like Nave and and, uh, and Merkberg and stuff like that. Merkborg. Merkberg. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just say it back to you like we're joking, but you're trying to say it right, and I'm just saying it like a Muppet. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> um, the thing for me, though, is that I want the, the background to be both useful and a way to make your character unique and feel unique in yes. in world. And I, I just don't feel like they're there yet right now. But in like games like Merc Borg and stuff like that, it does feel a little bit more like that because it oh. is sort of a substitute for a class in some ways. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Karen is a little bit too because Karen is technically classless, but your you just, background gives you certain things. Yeah, yeah, it gives you some stuff and might lend you to like certain predilections if you're like, um, well, in the in the backgrounds that I made for it too, like some of them, even if you're the same background, like some of them will give you a nice weapon and another answer to the to one of those questions will give you a spell. Mm. And so like you can you can kind of interpret that class. Like one of them, I made like an exorcist class. Mm -hmm. And so like one of them gives you like a like a long sword. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then one of them gives you um like a like just a spell book, like yeah. a prayer healing book. And then another one gives you like um a demon that you've trapped in a <laughs> so cool. I love in a mandrake or something like that. Yeah. You know, where you just like you you're it's just like different interpretations of what that background is. And I think that that can be a real strength in in certain games. Before we like close out, I want to sure. talk about Pathfinder because they oh. kind of do this with their character creation in a way where they, yep. they have your main class but is so highly customizable mm -hmm. through backgrounds and feats specifically. Yeah, feats um, does a lot. I think feats is weird because though it's 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 a lot of mechanical stuff. It's almost exclusively mechanical stuff. Yeah, but it's sort of like you're a stargazer, and what that means is that you are gaining the ability to sort of like divine what's what is going to be in the world mm -hmm. via your familiarity with the stars, and that ga gives you mechanical. But stuff. that's a feature. That's a feat that you it can is, just take at level up. It, it's sort of like be, I'm I'm not super familiar with mm -hmm. Pathfinder. I've made a couple characters just for fun, but I kind of forget how it works. Isn't it like you can choose a certain number of feats when you start, and Probably, then like yeah. as you move through, you can that accumulate more to kind of like make your character feel more Never specific. Never played Pathfinder, bro. <laughs> <laughs> not even once. Not I've even once. Pathfinder. And so like, what did you did you find that that customizable sort of thing did the same thing as what you would hope a background would do, which is like it's make it really, feel unique? It feels very mechanical to oh, me. Oh, really? When I, when I was doing a Pathfinder game, I played a rogue. Um, and yeah, just anytime it would just, it would feel very mechanical. It wouldn't feel as much like it was connected to anything like flavor story wise yeah. or flavor wise. The, the other thing I will say about the Karen backgrounds is that for the game that I've made, it's really specific to the setting. Yeah. Um, so I want to run like a Dolman Wood game and I've also thrown Nightwick Abbey in there mm -hmm. um, and some other stuff. And so like the, the things are really specific. There's like a little bit of lore and stuff. There's one. It's a, a it's a hexed uh, witch finder, mm -hmm. and the witch finders are also like a faction that's going to be in the game. Yeah. And then the and then if you're a hex witch finder, like you are, you have been hexed by a witch. Mm -hmm. And then I just have a list of different witches. Yeah. And then so all of those witches are real, you know, in the game. And so yeah. like it's all like really. I think backgrounds get really cool when they're very like tied in tied into the to the setting and then because like that duke insignia thing from the charlatan background that's just like a duke or something yeah it's, you'd it, be like this specific duke and i feel like people really like the um dragon lance backgrounds because they mm. are so tied into that setting where you're yeah, like right. a knight of solemnia or whatever right. and that yeah. gives you certain things or like being a certain type of wizard it allows invites you, you into the story yes mm, and i think yeah. that that Inviting feels... you into the story that's fun as a GM, would you ever make custom backgrounds for your players to for choose 5e? from? I mean, that's no. what I did with my game. Well, no, no, I meant just like I meant like um, when you're not making a system, but when you're mm -hmm. just making a, a game. I wouldn't make a background, but I wouldn't disallow it if someone came to me with a. Wait, background are you thing. saying as a player? No, as a GM, to be like these are the backgrounds that are tied directly into the story I'm gonna tell. That's what like, I've done. That's what I'm saying. Is yeah. like would you, like would you do that for a system that isn't one that you're building, kind of thing. Um, uh, no. Just when you're trying to tell a story within 5e or whatever, you could be like, these are the backgrounds I've made that are going to be directly tied. Like, you can do whatever you want with the other. I got too much going on when I'm making. I'm not doing that, too. <laughs> that's a, that's a, it's a lot of work to do it for 5e, I think, because of how much I don't ever want to run 5e again after this campaign. <laughs> um, it just doesn't feel like something I want to 
do, so I haven't really thought about it. Yeah, that makes sense. It's just like, are, like, are you ever going to run a 5e game, Nick? Um, would I run a 5e game? Yes. Would I run a 5e long-term campaign? Probably not. Mm-hmm. Even with like Humblewood when we played that like three shot, mm-hmm. just it was, was the beginning of a campaign. Mm-hmm. And then I was like... Yeah, I kind of want to play this in like a different system. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just totally. want to. I want to do it in a system that feels more like my style of play, mm-hmm. which is more cinematic and more yeah. like talky rather than mechanics. You can definitely make a PBTA system. It's they're not super hard to make. No, they're. I mean, because the, the main mechanic is the two d six, two d six, and that's very easy to design around. And I think <laughs> I think you don't even have to build archetypes if you don't want to. You can just have. You can be like, okay, this is the story I want to come up with. And then you talk to each one of the players that are interested in playing it. Mm-hmm. And you're just kind of like, okay, so what do you want to be? They describe to you what they want to be. And then they describe, you know, they're like, I want to be like an owl and I want to be like a scholar type or whatever. But I also want to be able to do like kick flips. So I have a skateboard. And it's yeah. like, great, you get a skateboard, you get this, you get books. And then like, what kind of powers do you want? And then, and then you help them collaboratively like build out what these are so you don't even have to make your own system like i'm doing i'm just torturing myself (laughs) you know what one of my favorite systems i've never played it but one of my favorite systems when it comes to this is city of mist it is so fucking cool it's like you're all avatars of stuff that is in is it forged in the dark forged in the dark Uh, is it like a blades in the dark sort of basis no it's 2d6 Okay. Um, but the the thing about it that's really really cool is that instead of like classes, you are all avatars of specific sort of cultural touch points. Like you could you could be the avatar of the evil stepmother from stories. Oh yeah, yeah and like you take yeah. and you can make abilities. I think you make three to start with that are directly tied into that archetype, and so it feels very much like this thing. But if you lean into your abilities too much, you might actually just become like a a rampant like a gate for that character to come through. And basically you lose control of yourself. You are Mm. just the avatar of this character now. Mm. Um, So it's really cool and allows you to balance it really well. But it also, all of the abilities you make with the GM. So like there isn't sort of some mechanical thing of like, okay, average damage in a a swing of an ax is X. So we should design this ability around being able to do that much damage. It's much more like an an evil stepmother um, has the ability to like use their words to confine like somebody into like so that they won't be able to leave their house or whatever. So maybe mm. that is part of your abilities and mm. like how do you use that? So much cooler. And I kind of wish backgrounds function like that where it's like, yeah, I'm a char- charlatan, which means that like with the GM like talking it through, like in a, in a situation where I have to pretend to be somebody else. I'm very good at it. And that is ability that I can pull out. Like I like that kind of stuff. Maybe it's too mechanical, but I just like it because it feels like that's ah, not mechanical at all though. It's like yeah. it's it's not mechanical. I would think it's like very like fiction oriented. Yeah, right. I just love fiction oriented yeah. stuff on anything, so mm-hmm. it's how I would do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, this has been another episode of Table Topped. If you want to know what our background is, head to our website. We have an about page there. We also have a contact form. It's tabletoppod.com. You can send in your question. We can talk about it. Uh, you can also go to Patreon. We have a Patreon, Table Topped, or patreon.com slash Table You can be a free or paid-for member. Uh, the paid-for members get to choose their own price. The free folks don't get access to everything, but they do get access to some stuff, and we'd love to have you there. We also have a Discord. If you're on our website, there's a little Discord button. Click that and join our awesome community. All right, everyone, we'll talk to you next week on another episode of Tabletop. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <Did the> Franco. <laughs>